Swami Vivekananda was a spiritual leader who represented Hinduism in the world's parliament of religions. He introduced the Hindu philosophies of Vedanta and Yoga to the Western world. During 1890s, the Smithsonian Institution recognized him as one of the 29 eminent foreign visitors of the United States. He was the founder of Ramakrishna Mission, which conducted extensive work in healthcare, disaster relief, rural management, tribal welfare, elementary and higher education and culture in India. Later, he became a freedom fighter for India as his countrymen found hope in him to get freedom and escape the brutal torture of the foreign invaders. Under the auspices of Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa, a famous mystic of India, Vivekananda was transformed from a restless youth to a mature man who was ready to renounce everything for the sake of God's realization. Ramakrishna taught him that service to men was the most effective worship of God. As a child, Swami Vivekananda or Narendranath Datta read many great works of the Western philosophers like Kent, Hegel, Herbert Spencer, as his father Vishwanath Datta was well versed in Persian and English literature. His mother Sri Bhuvaneshwari Devi would often narrate Hindu religious epics like the Mahabharata and Ramayana. This was the seed of spiritual life sown early in Narendra's mind. As he grew up, he became a brave and brilliant, intellectually alert young man. Swamiji was respected and admired all around India. He became legendary for the vast amount of effort and dedication he put in helping the poor. Many leading personalities or freedom fighters of India, like Bal Gangadhar Tilak and the rulers of princely states of India, became his disciples. The Maharaja of Mysore offered him the assurance of financial support to enable him to go to the West to seek help for India and to preach the eternal religion. Meanwhile, the United States headed full speed into a new industrial age. The world's Columbian Exposition was being hosted in Chicago in 1893. Millions gathered to celebrate the innovations that powered American productivity. Part of this World's Fair was the World Parliament of Religions. The Swami heard vaguely about this and decided that he would appeal to world on behalf of India. He would go to America so the East and the West would know and help each other. What impact did he have in Chicago on people? So the Swami set out to sail on May 31st, 1893 via Colombo, Hong Kong, Yokohama and Vancouver. From Vancouver, he took a train to Chicago. It was at this time that he was acquainted with Miss Catherine Sanborn who invited him to Boston. In Chicago, to his disappointment, the Swami learned that the Parliament of Religions would not be held until September and that no one could be a delegate without credentials. He felt lost. He decided to go to Boston, which was much cheaper. Miss Kate Sanborn helped him by taking him to Professor J. H. Wright, the Greek professor of the Harvard University. Vivekananda expressed his tensions to him and Dr. Wright wrote a letter to the chairman of the Parliament of Religions explaining, He is more learned than all our learned professors put together. Then, the Swami came back to Chicago. To his dismay, he lost the address of the committee which was providing hospitality for the Oriental delegates. The Swami asked for help desperately, but help for a colored man was not readily available. Suddenly, Mrs. George W. Hale met him and consented to take him to the Congress. The organizers approved him and let him stay with Mr. and Mrs. John Lyon, who were also hosting Southerners. They were worried that the guests would leave if the Swami stayed. But after meeting the Swami, his status of being highly educated caused them to not bother about the others. Finally, the Parliament of Religions opened on the 11th September 1893 at the Art Institute of Chicago's Great Hall of Columbus. Men from all nations were there. As he began, Sisters and brothers of America. A spontaneous clapping filled the house. And through his speech, he conveyed that sectarianism 
bigotry and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, have filled the air with violence, drenched it with human blood, destroyed civilization, and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would have been far more advanced. And he fervently hoped that this convention was the death knell of all fanaticism. The appeal of his simple words of burning sincerity, his great personality and his bright countenance was so great that the next day the newspapers described him the most eminent figure in the parliament of religions. The people were enchanted by him. His speech became famous across the globe. He was the focus of newspapers for a long time. The simple monk with a begging bowl had become the man of the hour. He received great respect and appreciation. Then, he signed a contract for lecture tours with the Bureau. The Swami had to be constantly on the move to speak to all sorts of audiences. Though this provided him with opportunities of knowing the different aspects of Western life at first hand, he soon found out that the Bureau exploited and embarrassed him. He felt disgusted and severed his connection with it. Now, he wanted to form a group of earnest American disciples and began classes, free of charge, for sincere students. Soon, he became the friend of eminent men and women like Professor William James of Harvard, scientists Nikola Tesla and Lord Kelvin, philosopher Robert Ingersoll, John D. Rockefeller Sr., Sister Christine, Mrs. Olibo, J.J. Goodwin, the stenographer, the noted American author Ella Wheeler Wilcox and the opera star Emma Calvey, who gave their all for the Swami's cause. After four years of living in the West, Swami Vivekananda was returning back to India. Yes, his tour was a success, a triumph. His followers from the West were so inspired by him that they traveled with him to India to help the poor to educate them and be a part of the Ramakrishna mission. His thoughts were confined not only to India, but to the whole world. Swami Vivekananda labored hard to give to the West his message of Vedanta as the universal principle basic to all religions, and his effort had by now resulted in the establishment of Vedanta work on a permanent basis in the United States. Active centers of Vedanta society came into existence in many cities of the U.S., like New York. I belong to India just as much as I belong to the world. I love India. But every day my sight grows clearer. What is India or England or America to us? We are servants of God. The East and the West may make their full contribution to the perfection of humanity. And the last civilization of the world may be a civilization not of struggle and warfare, but of peace and charity and harmonious cooperation to a great end. Even today, his teachings are being followed and he is a source of inspiration for many. It's the richness of faiths celebrated by a visitor to my hometown of Chicago more than a century ago, the renowned Swami, Vivakan Unda. He said that holiness, purity, and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world, and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character.